Hi everyone, Internet Traffic here, the Internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Steve Lacey album, Apollo 21. This is the debut full-length album of multi-instrumentalist, DIY, producer whiz, songwriter, key member of the internet, Mr. Steve Lacey, who has been operating in the music industry for a while now, but since making the effort to define himself more as a solo artist, there's been a, a lot more attention on him. He's also nabbed some pretty impressive production credits with the likes of Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole and Goldlink, as well as Denzel Curry. He recently landed himself in the feature list of the latest Vampire Weekend record, too. Lacey's style on his new album isn't too much unlike what we've heard him put out so far in the internet on his demo EP a few years ago. He's orchestrating tracks that are equal parts funk and soul and R&B, but with a slightly absurd or weird or psychedelic twist. In comparison with his previous output, especially with the internet, the music on Apollo 21 is maybe more personality driven, maybe some of the instrumental choices he makes are a bit quirkier, more playful. That being said, while I guess this album is Lacey's biggest and most professional project yet, it still pretty much sounds demo quality. It's like a really long demo. A lot of the mixes on this thing are dry, they are flat. The songwriting is really haphazard. Much of the time these tracks feel like they're rooted in a quirky or a funny idea that he drew up in a DAW or something that he just kind of riffed out on his bass or his guitar. So many moments on here offer so little in terms of a compelling song. You have the whimpering slow jam on Lay Me Down, which has the stuttering hi-hats, these sensual descending guitar chords. It's a pretty interesting vibe, but the appeal of it melts away pretty quickly once you realize how tedious and repetitive the songwriting is. And this is not the only track on this record that is so repetitive it feels like I'm trapped in a prison I can't wait to get out of. I'm counting down each second like it's it's a month. The song Inside is certainly uh, guilty of this. Inside, inside, tell me is it inside? The track guide does feature a very fun bass and drum loop, but when the song does transition out of this section, all Steve offers us is this really stringy guitar passage, some weak falsetto vocals. It sounds like something that should be building up to a chorus, but but there's not really one there. All in all, this track sounds like Pharrell doing a really bad Rick James impression. And even when Steve Lacey does come through with a compelling song idea, he does something like kneecap it by making it criminally short, like on the track Basement Jack, or the track Like Me, which is a very compelling song about being different, being bisexual, and struggling with that. But the track is nine minutes long, and after the core song, Steve unnecessarily guides listeners through these random musical passages after literal dead silence does not connect to the previous musical passage at all. It feels like one of those ending cuts on an old CD from the 2000s where a band dicks around for a few minutes in the studio after five minutes of pure silence. Except this is the second song on the record. The track Hate Coming Down does have an interesting song at the core of it, but the very nasally and weak lead vocals leave a lot to be desired. The track In Lust We Trust literally just sounds like a very bad guitar demo with some weak falsetto singing on top, although I do like how absurd the lyrics are about uh, wanting love, but then also wanting to uh, sleep in this person's car. Yeah, just to, to sleep in the car. One of the best written songs on this record is No Question, Love Too Fast, but even the instrumental execution here is really sloppy. It basically sounds like a reference track that you would hand to another artist so they could bring it to the studio and do something interesting with it. And of course, as I'm complaining about the sound quality of this album, I am open to alternative styles of mixing. I am open to lo-fi music. But this doesn't even feel lo-fi. The sounds of the instrumentation here just come off very plain and raw and untouched. Like Steve just played the instrumentation, assembled the beats, and then just didn't really want to do anything with it beyond that, outside of maybe adding a, a touch of reverb occasionally. I mean, I'm not trying to knock Steve Lacey's talents because I have been impressed with his work before on his demo 
on his production credits. But for whatever reason, the quality standards that were applied to that stuff don't seem to have carried over onto Apollo. This thing just feels like a demo masquerading as an album and asking fans to listen to 43 minutes of barely finished ideas is a big ask. I mean, if you're such a super fan of Steve Lacey that none of that even matters and you can easily see past the blemishes and the half-baked songs on this project, you will most likely enjoy it. But if you're looking for a record that is more fleshed out and substantive and well-produced, you are probably going to want to go somewhere else. I'm feeling a light too decent three on this one. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out, hit that up, or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Steve Lacey, uh, forever.